Great, thanks so much, Randy. Um, it's really awesome to be here today. I always love the opportunity to highlight the center and the work that we're doing. Um, I couldn't quite see who all was on today, so I'm hoping that uh, we've got some new faces in the crowd. For some of you, this might be some uh, old information, but I'm hoping that for a lot of you, it's new. We do have some new tools released even in the past year since our website update, so that should be pretty exciting. There we go. All right. Well, since um, since there's possibly several folks here um, who are new to us on the webinar today, what I thought I would do is just get started with a little bit of background. So again, sorry if some of this is old. Um, there are some recent developments that might interest everyone, though, in terms of the RCC program. So the Regional Climate Center program, uh, we've been around for over 30 years. And uh, our center, along with our sister centers, we collectively serve the entire country. And you can see that in the map here. And so our center is located at the School of Natural Resources at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. And you can see the states that we routinely serve here in this dark blue color. Um, we do also work throughout the Missouri Basin. So that does include our states plus Montana, Missouri, Iowa, and a small part of Minnesota. So we do go outside just a little bit there on certain projects. And if you are familiar with our program, you may notice a couple of changes here on the map. So the Southern Regional Climate Center has a new home at Texas A&M, and the Midwestern Regional Climate Center also has a new home at Purdue. And so um, since all of our centers have a similar mission, um, but we are in different parts of the country, we have slightly different approaches for serving our regions. So for instance, a lot of the work that we do here at our centers focused on agriculture and water resources. But um, for instance, the Southeast has a human health component to a lot of work that they do. As you might know, funding for our program primarily comes through NOAA, so through NCEI. But we, um, since we're all housed at universities, we do have that flexibility to apply for other opportunities. And that really helps us to expand our capabilities within our regions and really focus in on specialized projects with different stakeholders and partners. And at our center, everything we do is driven by our mission. You can see that there. And that's to increase the use and availability of climate data and information. And we accomplish that in several different ways. So first we provide um, climate services. We develop climate data and information products. Uh, we engage our partners and stakeholders. And we also meet our regional needs by supporting and participating in applied research. And so everything I'm gonna talk about today is very much mission driven. Uh, this is at the heart of everything we do. And you could probably hear my cat there, very excited when I started talking about climate services and climate data and products. So hopefully you're all just as excited as he is. So one of our longstanding partners, of course, is the National Weather Service. Um, and so we, uh, you might be surprised to learn that the Regional Climate Center support many of the climate products and tools that you use. So the Southern Regional Climate Center, they run the uh, error reporting tool called Datzilla. Uh, a lot of you have probably used that, or if not, you know people at your offices who have. Uh, the Western Regional Climate Center out in Reno, they run Weather Coder, uh, which I'm sure you all know is the program that co-op observers use to input their data every day. And the Northeast Regional Climate Center in Ithaca, they run the ThreadX program, and that helps stitch together long periods of record uh, which helps us to better depict daily extremes in temperature and precipitation. Some of you maybe have even been involved in uh, selecting those stations that got included in that latest round. Um, I think there's over 150 new station threads available, which is really exciting. Um, or actually, that's 150 new station threads, I think, in the past four or five years. So very exciting there. Um, I use these all the time, I'm sure. Some of you do as well. And of course, the regional climate centers also run the Applied Climate Information System. And this is the backbone of a number of climate products and tools that are out there, not just developed by us, but developed by partners and um, all sorts of people across the country. Uh, the two you might be most familiar with are Now Data, that's here on the left, 
And then of course, eczemasis um, with some sample data here on the right. Um, so now data, sure you're all familiar with, this is all available on each of your web pages at the National Weather Service. Um, but if you're looking for a listing of all of those pages, there is a link right here from the Southeast Regional Climate Center, um, and that takes you to a really nice page. So maybe somebody is uh, wanting to, to get the now data for different areas across the country, and they've emailed in or chatting with you about that. They don't necessarily have to go to each and every single page. Um, they could just go to this and they can click on the one that you want, um, and it'll take them directly to the Weather Service page that they want to see. So nice, just little handy tool in case people need it. And uh, another way that some of the regional climate centers have been engaged with the Weather Service is through these regional climate services workshops. And what these do is bring together uh, the climate focal points from the WFOs, uh, along with climate service partners across the region um, to provide opportunities to practice skills, build relationships, uh, go on field trips to visit uh, weather stations, all these kind of fun things. And since 2015, so about six years ago, we have um, conducted these workshops with 39 WFOs and three RFCs. And we hope to get another round planned um, when we can all start to meet in person soon. So maybe that would be uh, next year. And you can see on the map here, we've we've touched uh, on a lot of different WFOs across the across the central region. So not just High Plains, but out in the Midwest. And um, our last one was in 2019 down in Kansas. And we had uh, folks from all these offices down here attend. And these have been really fun to do. Um, it's great to meet people from the offices and learn what everybody's doing not just sharing the things that we're doing, but hearing what's going on at the local offices in terms of climate. Um, so hopefully we can get these up and running again um, and see some of you all at future workshops. So that was just kind of a very brief overview of our center and the ways that we've been involved with the National Weather Service over the years. Of course, we have a lot of other things going on at the center um, in terms of research and product development and things like that. Um, but I wanted to keep it a little bit brief so we can dig into some of the tools. So I'll just pause quickly in case we have any sort of initial questions. Um, I don't know if there's anything, Randy, coming in through the chat box or if anybody has any hands raised just yet, but we can pause for a moment just to see. Thanks, Natalie. Yeah, if you have any questions right now, um, you can raise your hand or type it into the questions pane. I've not seen anything just yet, Natalie. Sounds good. Well, I'll be pausing several times, so if you have some questions that come to you later, feel free to ask those. So now what I want to do is do a little bit of a website tour. We're not gonna be able to hit on everything, but I thought I would touch on some of our popular products and then also some of the new things that we have going on here. If you wanna follow along, please do. This is our web address right here if you're not familiar with it. It's just hprcc.unl.edu. And we will be starting off with our home page. So I'm gonna get out of my uh, PowerPoint presentation and go to the web. All right, it looks like the view has switched over. Good, there we go. So uh, late last summer, we rolled out a new website, which is always really exciting. And our new website, it does have a new look and feel, but nearly all of the features of our old site are still available. And we have things organized on top here so you could learn more about the center, you can read our newsletter. This is a really great way to kind of keep up on what new products and services we have coming available. Well, we always highlight those there. This is also where you can contact us. So if you have any questions at all, um, comments, suggestions, 
you can always use this to reach out and somebody will get back to you. You can, of course, you could reach out to me directly, but um, you can also use that if you forget my contact information. Um, some other things to point out, you can learn about our current and recent projects here, which might be interesting. And then we have our climate data and monitoring resources here on the right hand side um, in these last two tabs here. So what we're gonna do now is check out some of these products. And we can see from the homepage, we can access all these usual products and services. We can access our fun new features. Um, we do have a couple links here that make it easy to get to some popular products. So I will click on Explore Maps real quick here. And um, so, if you're familiar with our program, I'm sure you have seen these. If you're not familiar with our program, you maybe have as well. Um, you can easily recognize our ACES climate maps by their rainbow color scheme that you can see here. And I just wanted to point out quickly that we have expanded our map selection over the years, and it includes a number of new products and regions. So for instance, we have things like departure from normal average maximum temperature. So if we click on that here, uh, we can quickly see the, um, the heat wave. This is in the Pacific Northwest. So we're looking at over the past week, those departures in the 15 to 20 degrees above normal range here on our max temps. Uh, so you can quickly uh, assess some of those things, not just your usual um, temperature and precipitation, but you can use your, um, you can do your maximums and mins, and we have some other options there. I also wanted to point out that in the regions, we have added in the past few years, um, all of the weather service regions here. So you can get the big regions. And we also do have all 50 states if that's something that is interesting to folks there. So just wanted to point those out. Oh, and we do have Caribbean and Pacific Islands as well. There are two features about these maps that you may not be as familiar with, so I wanted to point those out quickly. So this link to image here button, what this does is it gives you the direct link to the map. So if you're really interested in a particular map, um, this drill down from the options, you don't have to go through those options every time. You could bookmark this page, or you can use this link here um, and you'll incorporate that link into your web design, and then you could have that specific, um, you could have that specific, goodness, there we go. Forgot to turn the email off. You can have that specific um, map come up onto your website, which is great. All right. Um, and so, uh, for those of you who are very interested in maps, what you might want to do is create your own. And so we do also have some GIS tools available. So I'll go to our homepage and we can go to climate data, online data services, and then what we can do is we can scroll down to our ACES climate maps GIS portal. And um, what you can do here is we have a couple different options for accessing that data. So one, you can use the direct downloads feature. And so if there's a particular map that you want, you can just directly download that. Just click on it really quick. It is just a file listing of all the maps that have been made today. And you can see that you have your files here on the right hand side to, to use. Uh, so you can download there. Or if you really want to start um, making maps on a regular basis. We also have a geo server. And what you can do is you can actually connect your GIS software to our geo server so that you can instantly have access to our updated maps on a daily basis. And of course, that would be for uh, folks who want to make maps on a regular basis. I don't know if I'd go through the trouble just for one or two maps, but we do have those options there just in case um, folks want to do that. So you can make custom maps. You can zoom into you know your cwa you can put your roads and towns and anything else that you want to onto those maps which makes it nice especially maybe if you've had an event that you want to discuss um, you could grab a preset map or a temperature map and add that in there 
So those are kind of some of the newer features for the ACES maps. Um, and now what I'm going to do is dig into the data a little bit. So we've got these mapped products, but we also have a lot of products for individual stations. Um, and so what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about the station tool in Station Data Explorer. And so you can access the station tool directly from this climate data link here. Um, all right. One second. Just seem to be having a little bit of technical difficulty here. Sorry about that. Going to get things shared again here. Oh. I'm just seeing a blue screen, Natalie. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Sorry about that. Hold on Hello. one second here. Okay, now I see your desktop again. There we go. All right. All right. There we go. That's better. Okay. Uh, very sorry about that. Um, okay. Oh, okay. There we go. We're back. Sorry about that. Now, in the station tool, so let's dig into that data just a little bit. Um, and uh, so this is similar to some things we had up and running on our previous website, but with a lot of extra bells and whistles. Um, so to me, the best part is some of the improved graphics, and that might be what you would be interested in um, using at your office. So this is pretty easy to use. You can just put in your um, location. So I'm just gonna put, I'll put Bismarck in as an example. And as that's loading, um, you can see it loads pretty quickly there. We have all these little red dots that come up with stations in the area. I should say this is all run off of ACES. And so um, we do have, uh, you can search for stations all across the country, which is great. Just click on Bismarck there. And so this pulls up uh, some metadata, uh, shows uh, where the station is located, it's peer to record. Um, and it's got these little options down here. Uh, we won't have time to go through all of those, but what I'm gonna do real quick is show you the annual overview graphs in Explore Data Options. So the annual overview graphs is really neat. Um, it helps you figure out uh, your perspective on temperature and precipitation super fast. So you have your temperature graph over the past year. So this is the past 365 days. You also have your uh, precipitation and your uh, deficit or excess. You can see here, we've got the blue. If you're above the normal, we've got the tan if you're below normal. And then you have your monthly accumulated precipitation there. So um, what's nice about this is that you can quickly pick out features like the February cold wave down here, or in this case, you can quickly see um, the building deficits that have been going on at Bismarck, which I believe is in D3 right now. And so this is great if you want to use this in a report or social media. All you have to do is use the export ping uh, button down there, and you can save this and you can use that however you would like. Um, so feel free to use that. Um, the other part of the tool that's really neat, uh, we'll just go back here, is this explore data section. And so here we go. And that's this button right here. All right. And so from here, we have a whole bunch of uh, variables to choose from, and each one of these will make a different graph for you. 
So we have about 17 options here, if I'm remembering correctly, so we won't be able to get through them all today. But um, what we can do is look at a few of them here. Um, you can find a station, you can put in a station ID. I'm going to put Lincoln in for this one, and we're going to look at a, mm, let's do snowfall accumulation. That sounds fun. So we are coming up on the very end of our snow, our whole snow season. So let's look at what was going on. Let's see here. Let's get up to 2020. We can look at July 1st. We can look at through uh, yesterday. Click on that create graph button there. And what this is gonna do is um, it's gonna create our accumulated snowfall graphic for that time range. And so what we can see here very quickly, um, we can see that we have individual snowfall events in those black bars. We have the accumulation uh, with that green line with the, um, and you can see our, uh, I'm sorry, we, the accumulation is with the, uh, yeah, that green line there. And it's gonna show us our amount above or below normal uh, right there. And so the interesting thing here is that uh, I wanted to pull this example because the uh, Lincoln Station did have its snowiest winter, so December, January, February, on record. And we can uh, interact with this graph and see our snowiest January day on record there at 14 and a half inches. So this is a great way to keep track of your uh, accumulated snowfall throughout the season. I know there's a lot of places you can get the accumulated precipitation, but maybe not so much the snowfall. So I think this is a really great addition uh, to, this, to this suite of products. And now uh, I'll show one more that I think is really neat. So there is this tool on here called the annual climograph. And we all know what a climograph is, but this one is just a little bit different in that you can track it um, throughout the month. So we have, uh, here we're looking at the Lincoln Airport and we've got our monthly precipitation and temperature um, compared to normal through uh, yesterday. And so we can see really quickly what months were wetter or drier, cooler or warmer. Um, I tend to use this for uh, constructing my climate summaries. So I know that I find it really helpful just to get a quick visual on how things were. I don't have to actually download all that data and compare it. I can just look at the graph, which is really nice. So I hope that this is something that um, can help you with your monitoring as well. And maybe even something that you could use on social media or in a presentation. Um, you can, uh, we've got the little hamburger button here. Of course, you can always download this as a ping to use it for later. Uh, you can also link directly to this graph. So let's say, for instance, you want to keep track of this. You don't necessarily want to keep going back to this, uh, to the tool and digging down. You can have this direct link to the graph and you can update that uh, from there every day, which is kind of nice. Great. So I'll just pause really quickly here. I went through um, our maps our station tool and station explorer. So there could be some questions. Um, and then if they're not, I will just uh, move on to a couple of other tools. Um, yeah. Hey, thanks, Randy, Sally. In, any questions, uh, again, raise your hand or type in the questions pane. Um, I, I love that that snowfall tool you just showed, Natalie. That was really slick. Um, that that will come in very handy. And, and I also really like the GIS um, files option that you, you showed and the ability. It sounds like you could have that set up to, to get those as they are it, it's distributed or issued. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. So what happens is um, if you connect your GIS software to our geo server, um, you will basically be accessing whatever the most current files are. So okay. let's say you wanted to, maybe you love making maps and you want to make a new map every single day. So you would not have to go to that download, um, the direct downloads page and do that over and over again. You would just connect your software to the geo server, you fire it up, um, you connect to that map 
and it will automatically update to the latest data. Okay. Um, so you could have your base map already made with your um, roads, towns, different landmarks, and then essentially you could just pop the data in right on top of it. So that looks off. That sounds awesome. A great tool. Yeah. Yeah, and we do um, have a tutorial on that page that uh, shows how to connect to the geo server. So that's really helpful. Um, it's got step-by-step -step instructions on there for anybody who wants to give that a try. I have personally tried it, so I know it works. <laughs> okay, great. All right, I don't see any hands raised right now, so we can just maybe just continue on. All right, well. So the next page that I'm gonna to touch on is our newest tool. And uh, this is called the Custom Climatologies Tool. And it was designed to accompany the new normals, which of course we know just came out in May. And so with this tool, you can create climatologies for stations all across the US. And it uses the underlying data set that was used to create the normals. So we will go there. Uh, we can access that through our online data services tab, which I should mention, this is simply a listing of every single tool we have on the website. So, um, so if you're ever trying to find something and you're not sure where it is, you can always just go onto this site and it will um, allow you to scroll through all the options there. So. We have our custom climatology tool here in our special products section. And this is a pretty simple tool. Um, it will let you choose um, any station in the US this, that is in the North American data set. So these are gonna be stations that, um, that uh, have normals. And if you wanna learn more about that data set, we do have a link there. Um, I'm not as familiar with that data set, but they do have some good documentation on the NCEI website um, and great folks there to answer questions um, about that. And so what you can do is you can um, create uh, a climatology for um, years that are not just the, no the normals period. So we have 1961 through last year loaded and um, it's going to do your monthly and your annual averages there. So pretty simple. You can search for a station in a couple of ways. Um, if you know your station ID, which I don't know about you, but I don't know them all, <laughs> all by heart. Um, but if you happen to know that, you can put that in there. Um, and then you can, you can uh, grab your station. Or you can search um, by state or a county FIPS code. So for instance, we could put in uh, Georgia, GA, search for stations. And this is gonna pull up every single station in Georgia that, uh, that we can access there. So we could um, pick Atlanta, we can scroll down, uh, we can go into our climatology settings. And so this is where we can pick our start and end year. So maybe we want to do, um, maybe we want to do just a few years. Maybe that's um, that's our interest. We can also select our maximum uh, missing data count here. So this is gonna be our missing values that you'll allow. I'll just leave the default in uh, for simplicity. Click on that calculate climatology button. And here you can see that our table has updated to Atlanta. We have our time period of 2005 to 2020, and we have our monthly and annual averages there. If you like the table, you can use it just like that, um, or you can export that data to a CSV file. Um, so again, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, I should mention this only does our uh, temperatures right now. We're hoping that maybe in the future, um, if we can get some more projects going, uh, it'd be great to be able to add precipitation. Um, and so this is one of these tools that I'm not sure if folks here on the call would need it, but I think it's good to at least know that it's available. You never know when you might get a question from somebody calling in or writing into your office wanting to know if something like this exists. Um, from what I understand, a lot of folks in the, 
utilities industry uh, do use uh, tools like this. They want to have, um, they don't necessarily need that 30 year time period. They want to look at maybe some rolling averages um, and things like that. So this could come in handy, especially if you get some of those questions. So this is our newest tool. And so I encourage everybody to take a look at that. It's very exciting uh, to have this up on the web. All right. Uh, so I think what I'll do is wrap up with um, one of my favorite tools that's on our site. And this is our uh, tribal decision dashboard. We can access it in a similar way to uh, to this tool. So we can go to our online data services page. We can scroll all the way down to the bottom to our special projects. And we can click on our dis tribal decision dashboards. And so, uh, so the one that I want to show you, we have three here, um, but we're going to talk about this EPA Region 7 dashboard. So this came out last fall and it's really exciting. Uh, so this dashboard was developed as part of a BIA funded project uh, that was actually led by the Sac and Fox Nation of Missouri in Kansas and Nebraska. And this included all the tribes in EPA Region 7. Um, and so the purpose of this dashboard was to provide this one-stop shop, I guess, if you will, for monitoring weather and climate conditions. And we worked directly with the tribes in this project to select the resources that would be most beneficial to them. And then we designed this interface to house them. And so this is one of these things that, um, that might uh, accompany uh, Ray's talk from a couple of weeks ago. I didn't see it, but it sounds like from what he was, uh, from what Randy was describing, you know, and talking about IDSS um, and developing products and tools, a lot of times what we do, uh, what we should do is work with the people that need those tools to understand exactly what they need so that we're delivering the right information and products for them. And so this is a really good example of how we did that. Um, and so this is, of course, this is very focused on um, Iowa, Kansas, and Nebraska. Um, so this, this particular tool as it stands may not apply to you, but we do hope to expand this out in the future to other regions. And so it can at least give you a little bit of an idea of some of the things we have going on. And so the dashboard is broken up into different categories. So you can see we have current conditions, water supply, data and graphs, summaries, forecasts and outlooks. Um, and then we also have options on the left hand side. So if you select any of these top options, our resources on the left update um, just as we click through these. So you can kind of see real quick how that works. Very easy. Um, and so what we try to do is make this dashboard as current as possible. So for instance, the ACES maps um, are the current, oops, are the current ACES maps that you see on our website. So these were the maps that were made yesterday. Um, and uh, so what I was, when I was telling you about the direct link to those maps, this is how you do it. You would put that direct link into your code and then you can have that map pop up here um, like we have here. So we have temperature, precipitation, um, we have a lot of different options. You can also see the US Drought Monitor is going to be the most current one available. Um, and we also have uh, some tools specifically for um, Kansas, for instance, with soil moisture. We have some vegetation options there. And the neat thing apart about this tool is, um, so right now we have it set on Northeast Kansas, Southeast Nebraska. Uh, but if you click on any of these, it will then update your maps and all of the different resources in the dashboard uh, to that area. So you can see here, we're now in Nebraska and now we are on Iowa. And so what this really helps to do is streamline the monitoring of climate and drought for these tribes. So they don't necessarily have to go to all of these individual tools that are on the web they can come here and kind of get everything into this nice little, um, into this nice interface. Um, one thing I thought I would show, 
we do on our last tab here, we do have forecasts and outlooks. So um, we did want to incorporate some of the things that the National Weather Service was doing, especially in terms of getting local forecasts, looking at um, convective outlooks, getting some of the, the flood monitoring in there and things like that. So we do have some weather service tools on there as well. Um, looks like we do have a few minutes here. So I'm gonna touch on one more new tool. I hadn't planned on doing it, but uh, this could come in handy for the springtime. We have uh, an undergraduate intern actually developed this tool. It's a soil temperature climatology. Some of you might be interested in. Again, that's from our online data services page. And what this climatology does is it tells you the average date of when uh, your soil temperature reaches a certain threshold. And so we have got five degree increments from 40 degrees all the way through 70. And this is really great in the springtime when people are deciding when to plant and not just when to plant um, our big row crops like corn, soybeans, but also for folks who are looking to plant their gardens, maybe their tomatoes and peppers and beans and things like that. So this at least helps give you some, some averages over the region uh, when our soil temperature reaches these thresholds. Uh, this was, we get asked about this quite a bit um, in the springtime and it was easy to check individual stations, but we didn't have these nice maps that kind of showed us on that regional level. So we do have shaded and dot maps. If you wanted to look at the individual stations that were used, um, and we do have a description here of how these were put together. So just a little something extra for your toolbox. You never know when you might need it, but I know that for us, it is a question that we get asked. So we wanted to help try to fulfill that need. So maybe this will help you all as well. Um, so that's gonna conclude my part of uh, today's presentation. Um, we do have a lot of other tools that are on the website. For instance, we have several agroclimate tools. We have some tools specifically uh, built for cities, but really anybody can use these tools. Um, but that would take a whole other webinar to go through. So I hope that this, um, this brief webinar on some of the features on our website was helpful and that you um, enjoyed learning about some of the newer tools that we have, um, especially the ones coming out over this past year. So with that, I just wanna thank you all again uh, for being here today and feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all. I will put this up, uh, here you go. You can see my uh, contact information there if you have any questions at all in the future. So thank you.